Hi everyone. So, as you can tell, I'm outside with my kids. Uh, however, I wanted to get this lesson going for you guys. So here, first, uh, problem of the day. This is the problem of the day from yesterday. Um, as you guys are looking at this, I'm going to put up a new slide. Boop. I'm also going to talk to you guys. Go ahead and keep on writing while I'm talking. So first of all, thank you, Sub, for taking care of my students today. I'm not going to grumble. Thank you, Sub. Hey, I'm taking a video. Uh, hey, so I'm. thank you, Sub, for watching over my students today. Um, over the course of this lesson, if the students raise their hand, if you could stop or pause the video, that would be great. Um, if you hover next to my computer or nearby, you can use the mouse and just click on the middle of the screen. It should pause. Uh, that'll give them enough time to write everything down. Um, students, if you could, please be respectful. If you need the sub to pause the video, please raise your hand, and hopefully the sub uh, catches it in time. If not, ask them to scrub. Scrub is when you take the little slider from the video and you move it left and right. It's called scrubbing. Hey, now you know something. You learned something new. Look at that. Um, so there you go. So up here on the board, I realized I had three different Algebra 1 classes. We each came up with three different answers, or started coming up with three different answers to the problem. And it's not going to work me going over the same problem three different times because you guys aren't going to be invested. So instead, I took an average of all three of my classes, and we're going to pretend that there are 20 students in each class, and that each student brings in 24 treats, except for the three students who brought in double the number of treats. And we want to find the total number of treats, and we're going to say that that's T. <coughs> hey, can we not swing those at each other, please? That'd be great. Hey, why don't you go play in the yard? With those. That'd be great. And not swing each other. Which way should I throw the ball? Uh, throw the ball towards the house. Okay. So... Yeah. Good job on directions. Yes. So let's go ahead and do this. Pit. All right. So first, I know that um, I need to find the total number of treats. That equals to T. I know that 24 students are bringing in... Ooh, that's not true at all. Uh, pointer options, eraser, boop, 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 boop. quite the opposite. Let's try this again. I know that um, uh, three students are bringing in double, so three students are bringing in 48, and I know that 20 minus three students are bringing in 24, and that equals T. So let's go ahead and solve this. 3 times 48, uh, I got a calculator here. You probably have a calculator. You're probably going to find it faster than I am. Oh, 144. That's a lot of treats. Uh, plus, let's go ahead and do the 20 minus 3. I'm doing this completely wrong. We'll get the same answer, but I'm totally not following order of operations. Let's actually follow order of operations here. <clears throat> I may be paying more attention to my kids than to the problem. There's three strikes in baseball, sweetheart. I know. Oh, okay. And softball. We got three you already got three strikes, then you're out. No, we got, we already have two. Oh, okay. 20 minus 3 is 17. Bring everything else down. And I have 17 times 24. 3 times 48. Plus equals 2. All right. So T is the total number of treats. All right. Next thing I do is multiplication left left to right. That may be backwards because I forgot if I mirrored the camera or not. So left to right. 3 times 48 is still 144. Bring down everything else. Plus 17 times 24. It's T. Now I do 17 times 24. 17 times 24 is equal to 408. Bring down everything else. So I have 144 plus 408 equals T. My phone just went off. Plus 144 equals. So if I add those two together, that's 552 equals T. However, that's not my final answer because I need the form of sentence. Um, Mr. These students. Brought 552 treats. Sorry. I'm writing with my thumbnail treats. There we go. That's pretty close. Hopefully my beautiful face is not covering up that 
All right, so there we go. There's the problem of the day. Uh, if you need to pause, pause it. You're fine. Play Carry on, kiddos. Play got two strikes, but she hit the ball. Strikes. We just had two strikes. Two strikes. But she hit the ball. Okay. I'm the three. I'm the three. Okay, good. Yahoo! That one is it. When you hit the ball. Did Luke catch it after you hit it? No. Okay. We take baseball very seriously in my family. Then you're not out. So you have a base hit. Hey, we're here. <coughs> Solving an equation using the distributive property. So, uh, go ahead and take some time to copy this down. If you need to pause the video, probably should pause it right now. <coughs> All right, let's use the distributive property. So I need to distribute negative. Where's my mouse pointer options pin? Illegal, bud. But that's how you play baseball. We're going to distribute negative 8 to both of these. So we're going to take negative 8 times 2x and negative 8 times negative 1. The way this looks. So you have negative 8 times 2x. And then you have minus negative 8 times times one that needs to just be a regular one <laughs> times one equals 36 we all know that minus a negative is really plus so I have negative 8 times 2x plus 8 times 1 equals 36. Whoa, 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 scooter tag is not a good idea. People are going to get hurt. So not scooter tag. All right, so now I multiply from left to right. So I take negative 8 times 2x. So that's negative 16x. Yeah, we probably should put the scooters up. What? Just put the scooter up, bud. So I have negative 16x plus 8 times 1 equals 36. So now I multiply 8 times 1. 8 times 1 is 8, so I have negative 16x plus 8 equals 36. So now I need to go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. So I have... Whoa, 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 hey, 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 whoa, dude, stop, let's not drag that. That's super loud. Thanks. We don't want to wake up baby Leia. Thank you, buddy. So I have negative 16x equals 36 minus 8 is 24. Now I can divide by negative 16 on both sides. Luke, you don't need to scream, bud. Negative 16 and negative 16 cancel out. And I can simplify this over here. 20, 24 over negative 16. Negative 16. Positive divided by a negative is negative, so that whole fraction is negative. And then 24 and 16 can be divided by 4. The way that I usually show reduction is here. So 4 goes into 24 6 times. So I have negative 6. Uh, 4 goes into 16 4 times. Oh, and I see that I can actually reduce it down even more. And I get uh, x equals negative 3 halves. Uh, I am making a video for my students. Do you want to say hi? Good job saying hi. Um, I don't have enough room in the slide, but we're going to go ahead and check these. Um, I'm going to leave that for you to check on your own, because, again, I'm out of room on this slide. <coughs> if you need to pause it, pause it. Okay, moving on. So here is the check. I'm going to have you guys check. Um, it looks very similar to the previous one. However, I want to point out that in the bottom it says, can you solve the equation above by using the division property of equality? And if so, how? I just got stung by a mosquito. Oh my goodness, like just right now. The problems. Um, check your answer. And then can you solve the equation by using the division property of equality? So here's what I want you to do. Uh, I need you to, to listen to directions, pause the video, and then go from there. So the first thing I need you to do, um, I need you to do this problem right here for the check. Go ahead and uh, after you finish the problem, I need you to compare your answer with everyone else at your table. 
If your table mate is gone and you're by yourself, I ask that the sub move you to another table. Um, make sure you finish the problem. Complete silence. When everyone at your table is done, they need to talk about it. And check your answer. If you've all got a different answer, you need to collaborate and come up with the correct answer. And then we're going to answer the question at the bottom. So go ahead and pause it. All right. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to talk with your table mates. Hopefully you've come up with the correct answer. And then the question at the bottom. Can you solve the equation above by using division property of equality? And the answer to that is yes. How? So right now, <coughs> I am multiplying both. Sorry, I'm multiplying the right side by 3. So the division property of equality, which means I would divide both sides by 3. And this sometimes is an easier way to do than the distributive property, this problem especially. So this 3 and this 3 cancel out, which is what we wanted. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. And so now I have 6 equals... 2x minus 6. So now I can go ahead and solve for x. So I'm going to add 6 on both sides. 6 plus 6 is 12, and I have 12 equals 2x. Now I can go ahead and divide both sides by 2, again using the division property of equality, and that doesn't cancel out. Mr. Roman's crazy. Erase. Boop. Hey kiddo, stay over here please. Uh, and then I'm left with x equals 6. And that's what you should have got when you did the answer on your own. That's why I actually didn't go over it. And I wanted you guys to go over it. You should have got 6. We should have agreed. All right. <clears throat> the last thing that I'm going to teach you... Oh, I'm going to go and give you a second to pause this if you need to. Luke, get off the transformer, bud. Dude, off the transformer now. Let's not electrocute ourselves. That'd be great. That is a transformer. That will electrocute yourself. It'll also somehow magically turn off half the power to Oak Grove. Electri electricity. He asked what's inside of it. All right, so this is problem number four. Go ahead and take, take a bit to write it down. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause. Yeah, that's the sewer, bud. You don't want to open that up. That stinks. So this problem here, I need to get rid of my fractions. So right now I've got a fraction with this divided by 4 and a fraction with this divided by 3. All right, let's get away from that, bud. So I need to multiply by a number that first I need to go ahead and multiply 4 and 3. 4 and 3 gives me 12. So now I need to multiply each of these by 4 and 3. Um, notice how I'm actually doing it by 4 and 3. You'll see why here. If I multiply one thing, Luke, thank you, will you apologize to my students? Come here. Look at the camera. Say you're sorry. Sorry. It's okay, bud. I forgive you. All right. Now go play in the yard. It's a beautiful day. You guys should all play in the yard when you get home, too. So I need to multiply each of these by four of three, or by four times three. So I'm going to multiply... I'm going to multiply the first thing, first term by 4 to 3, the second term by 4, 4 times 3, and the third term times 4 times 3. That looks like this. 4 times 3 times 3x over 4 minus 4 times 3 times x over 3 equals 4 times 3 times 10. So here's what's going to happen. Watch the magic. I've gotten rid of all of my denominators. Beautiful! Now we can actually solve this. So, I'm going to take what's left. 3 times 3x minus 4 times x equals 4 times 3 times 10. Yeah, I am going to have a sub. Tomorrow, that's why I'm making this video. Home, I'm trying to rest. I'm sick. 3 times 3x is 9x minus 4x. And then I have 4 times 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30 times 4 is 120. Bam. Now I've got 9x minus 4x equals 120. Uh, I'm going to go and do my work up here. Boop. 
So 9x minus 4x is 5x. Hey Luke, Lydia can sing. Anyone can always sing. It's okay to sing. Just like it is in my classroom. Anyone can sing. If you know the lyrics, even better. Divide both sides by 5. And 5 divided by, or sorry, 120 divided by 5 is a super important number. It is 24. So x equals 24. Go ahead and substitute in that to check. Luke, stay over here, please. So x over 24 is my answer. Go ahead and check. Um, hey, I have one more thing for you guys to do. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. I have two checks for you guys to do. Go ahead and do these checks. Uh, when you get done with your first check, check with your table. Then when you get done with your second check, check with your table. Wait until everyone's done with the first check before you guys do the second one. Hey, it's been wonderful. Um, thank you, Sub, for working with my students. Thank you, students, for working on this. I appreciate it. I'm excited to see you guys on Wednesday. Um, if you're totally freaking out over all of this and want me to go over it some more, don't worry. We're going to do a problem similar to this. And I got him. That mosquito won't bother anyone anymore. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys when I get back on Wednesday. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. I sound like Stampy when I say bye-bye? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs>